infomercial mainstay, MyPillow, has gained quite the following since first entering the manufacturing scene back in 2004. And now, over a decade later, the company has 11 retail locations, employs 1,500 workers, and has sold over 46 million pillows and generated $250 million in revenue just last year. So joining us now to discuss is MyPillow founder and CEO Mike Lindell, along with his podcasting partner, the Brewer Group CEO and former NFL player Jack Brewer, back with us. Mike, thank you so much for Thanks being for here. Me on. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, your story is an amazing one. We just wanted to start with kind of the success that your company right. has built up so far. But the start of that goes way back before then. Right. Uh, your book, now out, is all about the rise yeah, of your rock my, bottom uh, to the top. Came out today, what are the odds from crack addict to CEO? And I, uh, that's the part that people don't know is I was on a parallel railroad track. I was an addict, a cocaine addict first, then crack cocaine. And uh, comes from uh, my parents' divorce when I was seven. Uh -huh. So I, uh, you know, try, I think addiction all comes from wounds. I was put into a new school, so I didn't fit in or didn't feel like I fit in. Then you, you it's a self-worth thing, and that manifests into, you know, you, you don't want to get rejected. So I either didn't talk to people or I would show off. You know, I'm, hey, watch this. I'll jump out of a bus window, you know, whatever. You know? <laughs> and, uh, Good and, way to uh, show off. And, uh, you know, and they... Uh, so it's just, uh, I invented my pill in 2004, but I didn't quit crack and everything until January 16th, 11 years ago today on 2009. It's amazing. See, that, see, that's the thing, though. I think a lot of people out there might be wondering, how can I be an entrepreneur? But, but your story is one of, of kind of shaking a bad, bad habit. You, you, you stopped using crack cocaine, but I mean, how But I was you... always an entrepreneur, too. I had, you know, my sister flooded a third-story uh, apartment with a waterbed one time in the, in the 80s, and so I became a carpet cleaner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was always on um, problem solution, and I had all these different, you know, businesses, and some would fail, some, you know, some would have, something would come up with, you know, I was a lot of my own adversity, and, and, uh, um, then when I did quit everything, uh, people had taken my come by the grace of God. I quit everything overnight, and then when I nobody would take me my company, they were taking my company. This, these guys were a lot of betrayal. And, and in 2011, I told my friends and family, let's if no one box stores, nobody's going to take us. Let's get let's make a, an infomercial. Uh -huh. Well, I didn't know infomercials don't work because it's just a brand to get in the box stores. And we pooled our money and and uh, we went to film it. And my and the, the day we filmed it, I just wanted a real audience and a friend of mine. But remember, I couldn't talk to people. I yeah. wasn't very good at talking. And the night this producer texts the other guy, and we were doing our reads, he said, this guy's the worst I've ever seen. He will never make it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, and now look but, at you. Uh, on October 7, it launched in the middle of the night. I was living in my sister's basement. And I had like 10 employees. And 40 days later, I had 500. Amazing. Just went, it's amazing stuff. So, well, first, happy anniversary for your Thanks. sobriety. Um, I, for any entrepreneur that's out there, either ones that have had trouble past or not, what is your advice to them to get their business up off the ground? For the business part of it is deviations. You, you better, if you're, when you're out there, I don't care what it is, if you don't recognize a deviation, whether it's good or bad, and act on the good and react to the bad, you're not going to make it. I mean, you have to say, well, you know what, look at what, and then if you're getting into a, a service or an, or, or an invention, um, you know, there's no better time than right now with this, the big, the best consumer confidence ever. You have a safety net of great wages. So they're out taking chance now. That's what I like seeing. Yeah. But it's be able to take that chance and, and have faith and have, if you don't have passion for what you're going to do there, forget about it. It's over. It. It's over. You know, I mean, why waste your time? Why would you want to do something you didn't enjoy? Yeah, right. for sure, you know, People say to me all the time, they go, Mike, why would you, you know, you work all the time. You're, you're doing all this. I said, this isn't work. Addiction was work. I love what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we've heard you talk a lot about this on the Level Headed Podcast, Jack's right. podcast, yeah. too, when we talked about it. But both of you guys have a very interesting relationship with the White House right now because you've been, both you both of you have met with President Trump. And, Mike, you've been invited to the White House for forums uh, about companies making products in the U.S. Right. Right. Famous, my pillow is famous for doing that here in the U.S. As a businessman, though, why is, it, why is that piece important to you, making it here in the U.S.? Well, it's be, you know, I'm, I look around me now, all the people I graduate with, my friends and family, I have 1,600 employees. We're like a big family. That means a lot to me. And these are careers here. And, you know, with my pillow, before this great economy that President has created, 
before that, I was like my pillow. We were, we were. I looked around and just my pillow staying here. That affects all the other ones, the ones that get make the fabric here. It's like twenty thousand jobs. You know, they had a thing once. I had told the president when I went to the manufacturer summit back yep. a couple of years ago. I said, you know, there was a back in the day there was a snowmobile company that left our country, went to make it overseas. The fasteners followed them. The ones that made the skis followed them. And 20,000 jobs. Is that not more expensive for you, though, as a manufacturer to do it here? It's actually not, and I'll tell you why. When you get something overseas, you're at their mercy, and it comes, takes 90 days or 120 days. You have money you have to give them, you know, so your money's tied up. But if, some, if your footprint changes, if you either don't need the product or now you need more, you know what you end up doing? You end up air shipping it in, and you're right back to where you would be. And plus, I get to look at every product that comes off my assembly line just like it was my only customer. Right. And that means a lot, where you can see it, one that I would use myself. Right. What if you get it? I had some. I had a ship come over for another product that I can't be made here, and it got started on fire in the Atlantic Ocean. It's not guess ideal. What? Right. My <laughs> stuff. My stuff wasn't hurt, but I still had to pay over a million dollars because that's the international law. Yeah. Those, so Cheaper yeah. things overseas, cheaper on the front end, but maybe more expensive sometimes on the back end. But I had a question for you, Jack, um, about the podcast uh, that you guys have and what people can hear when listening to it. You know, the, the focus, I mean, look at us. Me and Mike, you know, you wouldn't typically see us together in a normal situation across America, but this is what we need to see as a nation. And, and him and I uh, got together because we really wanted to bring a level-headed approach to a lot of the divisive issues that affect our country. Uh, Mike's story is so inspirational. You know, I've gone through so much. We want to just bring people hope again. You know, you, you, you hear all the negativity all the time uh, and all the divide uh, that we see in our, in our media outlets. But Mike and I said, you know what? Let's use our platform. Let's use our voices to give people hope and inspiration. I mean, this guy went from a crack crackhead to being one of the most successful CEOs in America. That is the American dream. He didn't start his book tour, you know, in front of the lights, camera, action. He spent an entire day out of prison giving out this book to inspire all those addicts that are locked up. And so that's really the message we're trying to bring. Uh, and well, and I think it's a uniter. Addiction affects everyone in this country right now, mm -hmm. no matter how many forks you eat with. Mm -hmm. This isn't just somebody in the street. This is that everyone either knows someone. People are dying right now. All of it. That's a common ground. I think it's a. I think it's the opportunity for the biggest revival in the history of the United yeah, States. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're bringing seen, people back Fed. to God, bringing uniting people. We're all. I mean, we're all in this together. And those are. And to get that common ground and get get rid of addiction. My book, the proceeds are going. To, I'm starting a network, the Lindo Recovery Network. It's yeah. gonna. It's gonna. Absolutely wipe out addiction. No, it's and he, he bought the paper for the book. He he paid all the money for the book, so produced it himself, so the money can go to the kingdom. And don't forget, addiction is not just drugs, man. Right. My addiction was sex. Right. And so a lot of people have different different addictions. Different addictions. Yeah. Gonna, we're going to cover the whole gamut with the Linda Recovery Network. That's but awesome. I wanted every dime. I didn't want to go out there in the box stores. I, I wanted no middlemen. Write to the people. You get the book, and I use the proceeds for to help the other addicts. No, it's awesome. It's very cool, and it's something that we've seen too. I mean, the Fed's talked about the opioid addiction crisis and everything else, and all the growth that could be there. We're just not seeing it. But Mike Lindell, and I'll say one more thing too. I was there when the president signed the opiate bill, uh -huh. and the stuff he's done from people like my ministry that he's rolled back these all this bureaucracy and stuff. Where you know a lot of these states have you can't help an addict unless you went to college for four years. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I don't, there ain't nobody in college that went to college to learn how to treat, uh, counsel an addict. I want an addict you that's made it. it through to the other side. Yeah, and sees I it. I want to hear from them. They're my hope. Yeah, and knows how to get there and get it done. But Mike yeah, Lindell, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's a, thank a you. privilege thank to you. have you in. you got to come thank back. You. Jack Brewer, thank you, as I'll always. You soon. Good to see you again. Yeah, you'll be back soon. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.